Hello everybody and welcome to my first video in the series which is spending 200 hours developing a game in Godot. The reason that I want to make this video is to show to myself and to other people what you can expect if you invest a somewhat significant amount of time developing a game in Godot. We'll be able to see how the game evolves, what sort of things I learn, what sort of things I potentially don't learn, and all the things that come along with that. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that and who knows, maybe we can learn something together. So a quick introduction about me and what to expect from this video. Uh, I am a back-end software engineer, so this isn't going to be me learning programming for the first time. Um, I've done a few Godot tutorials and I have experience making UIs in the past, so a lot of this stuff might not be necessarily completely new to me, but at the same time, I am absolutely not an expert at all, and there are a lot of concepts that are new to me. So without further ado, let's get cracking on and let's see where I'm at with the project. Okay, so let's take a look at my project. So the project is named The Realm of Runes and Stars, which I got from ChatGPT. Thank you, ChatGPT. Um, and I've tried to keep a pretty well, a very simple project structure right now. I have assets, dialogue, and resources. Dialogue I'll dig into a little bit later in the video as it's uh, quite interesting, one of the things I've learned. Uh, resources, which I've mainly got from um, Open Game Art and itch.io I believe and then I just have uh, assets which is where most of the most of the components really are so here I have a singletons folder and this is where I have things like config loading and saving the config uh, I have something called global which has some helper functions for changing scenes logger just very simple logging thing logs the logs the time and then I have state um, state is probably going to come into play a lot more over the next few hours where we start kind of introducing quests and state within the game that we save, load, things like that. Uh, we have a scenes folder here, which is mainly just for the actual world. So this right now is my map of the game. Uh, as you can see, I've tried to build like a little town, different areas and... Uh, really just putting in the work slowly just to kind of pad out a world that makes sense. I have a few other scenes here, which is things that I was playing around with. So here I was playing around with different uh, input systems and collision detection, projectiles. Uh, here's a bit of a, a sand pit of adding items and interacting with items, things like that. And this is something that I definitely recommend is don't be afraid to just try something and scrap it, you know, Put something down try it out learn something from it and then you learn and the next time it'll be even better cool so that's scenes um i have a little folder for menus here which is very very simple we have a start menu uh, we have a settings screen which we'll dig into in a second and then items this is going to change very soon uh, I completely refactored this. I just did some basic things just to try and get some general ideas and understanding of how things work. And entities, maybe the most the most interesting one is the player entity. Um, but I also created some other things like enemy, slime, spaceship, which aren't really a part of the game right now, but they might be hacked out together at some point. So let's load up the game and have a little look. So this is the game, here we have a little start screen with a bit of an animated spacey background that I just put in so it wasn't a, a boring screen. And here we have some music, a master volume that will then save and load to a config file. Uh, I'll turn that on just a second. Yeah, cool, here's the game. Uh, see we have a little bit of dialogue and we have your character. He character can move around. Right now there's some basic collisions, there's some basic non-collisions, uh, but like I said earlier, I'm really just trying to get an idea of the world that I want to build and try and imagine the experience and the emotions and the feelings of people when they kind of come into this game and what they'll see as we play through it. So we have some house, a little house there, we have a little town down the road where there's like a little marketplace. and. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to adding in some characters here, getting some dialogue in and 
start kind of filling in all the little details that make this a game, adding some quests, adding some objectives, some things to do, some things to explore. Um, yeah, we've got like a little river, try and keep things interesting. Little item up here, which may or may not be of some significance at some point. And yeah, this is a game, I think so far it's quite cute. Uh, there's a lot of improvements I need to do to the map, but we're slowly working on them and getting the time in. So, what have I learned so far? The first thing on the list is game assets and game design is hard. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to recommend is there's a book here called The Art of Game Design by Jesse Schell. Um, I've only read probably 30 pages of this so far, but it seems like a very recommended book and it gives a a very good introduction into the perception of game design and probably makes you think in ways that I definitely never thought of before. So uh, highly recommend that. Continuing on the topic of game assets, uh, if you're similar to me, you're probably using free assets or things that you can find on the internet. And one of the issues that I quickly ran into is that different packs from different artists, they're going to have different color schemes. They're gonna have different angles. They're gonna have different looks. So don't be afraid to get involved in the graphic design. It's part of the fun. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a brilliant person at editing graphics or anything like that, but ultimately, if you want your game to look how you want it to look, you will either have to get involved or have someone involved who can help you out. But it doesn't have to be hard, okay? So this is um, an example of the, the sprite sheet that I'm using, Mystic Woods on itch.io. It's one of the most popular ones. And this is a certain color scheme with the wood. You can see here the different shades of wood and um, how the border is, things like that. I then found this asset pack, which for the most part doesn't really go with it. The, the shades of wood are different, the colors are different, and even like the angles of how they're drawn is slightly different. Um, but... All I had to do to kind of fit this in to work within my game was I just took the wood and I changed the colors to match the colors that I was using here. And suddenly it's not so offensive. It fits in and it kind of works. Don't be afraid to tweak things. Don't be afraid to pull images into this software and try and work out some sort of pixel art for them. It's actually not too difficult and it is very satisfying. Now, the second big thing that I've learned, which I imagine a lot of people go through this process, is to do with tile maps and using terrains effectively. Um, so how I initially did the the floor and the, the uh, dirt and grass terrain is I had different layers. I had a base, which has a, the grass base, and then I have a layer called Amiga, for some reason, that then does kind of like the, the dirt path on top of that. You later find out that using terrains makes everything so much more simple. You can just very simply drag out different quadrants and then literally just draw your thing here. And this saves so much time, makes everything so much nicer and easier to the point where I'm going to have to completely scrap this and redo this in terrains. Um, Definitely do not overlook terrains, get them down, and it will save you so much time in the future. Cool. So next one, um, this is if you're using Go.4.2, if you do, uh, if you go into the project settings, you search for GD script, um, there is a setting for untyped declaration. And you can set this to either be ignore, warn, or error. The default is ignore. And what this means is that it will now lint your GD script and make sure that you have types everywhere. Uh, in Go dot in Godot version four, sorry, um, using static typing is actually a performance increase. Um, I'll try and get the stats off a blog for you, which it's not that performance is a big issue, but it's it's something. But it also lets you kind of dig into the different objects that are in Godot, and it kind of gives you a bit more. It's cleaner, gives you a bit more of an understanding of what objects you're working with and how they interact with each other. Definitely recommend turning this on and kind of getting everything all statically typed nicely. And then finally, yeah, we have the asset library and there's some really good things on here that's gonna save you so many times. So um, I literally just implemented the dialogue manager by Nathan Hode. 
uh, definitely check out his GitHub and his YouTube channel. And this is excellent. Uh, this saves you putting in so much work for dialogue and it does a, a bunch of things. It's really extensible and it's so nice to use. So here, um, this is a very, very simple dialogue script, but we have weights in here. We have conditional statements based off the state of the game. We have pulling in data from the state. You can respond in the dialogue. You can see everything. You can add images into the dialogue. Um, there's some good examples here of how this looks. Hello, this is some dialogue. And this is just from uh, the tutorial that comes out of the box, by the way. Uh, we've got start again. It starts again. Second one. And you can really do so many things with this. And this adds just a, a really good layer of depth to your game with very minimal requirement from you. Um, don't be afraid to use the, the tools that are available to you. And I can 100% recommend this. So what's next for my project? Um, obviously, I'm going to continue working on the map. I want to look into things such as composition when I'm making entities, items, you know, I want to start getting some characters uh, within the game and some items within the game and also how I structure the functionality between those items and those characters. Let's make some uh, YouTube videos on all those. So I look forward to getting to that. Um, and then also start working in some actual game logic it's brilliant that i've got a map and you can walk around the map and that's cool but i uh, i kind of want people to be able to explore things and find things and less be a prototype and really actually have some sort of story and theme and uh, mechanics to it so yeah um thank you for watching my first 10 hours of uh creating a godot project and I'll see you guys at the next one, which will be maybe 25 hours. We'll see. We'll see what comes of it. But thank you guys.